Welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue learning from ebook chapter one, lesson one, and specifically, we're going to learn how to calculate the percent abundance. After reading this section and watching this video, you should be able to calculate the average atomic mass for any element given its isotopes and percent abundances. So let's review and remind ourselves what an isotope is. Isotopes of a given element have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. Here, these are two different carbon atoms, so each has six protons. However, they have different numbers of neutrons. So the one on the left is carbon-12, the one on the right is carbon-14. Because they have different numbers of neutrons, each isotope of a given element has a different isotopic or atomic mass. And remembering that the mass of a neutron is approximately equal to one AMU, we would see that carbon-12 has 12 AMU, carbon-13 has approximately 13 AMU, and carbon-14 has 14 AMU, approximately. Now, the problem is, is that there's not an equal amount of any given element's isotopes. Uh, carbon-12 is the vast majority of all of the carbon atoms in the world. There's a small amount of carbon-13, and essentially an almost a zero um, percentage amount of carbon-14. So if we want to know well, what's the average mass of carbon, if you pick up just a chunk of carbon, it's going to be the average atomic mass, the weighted average of those isotopes based upon their percent abundances and the weights that each isotope is. So for example, carbon, uh, the element on the periodic table it's listed as 12.0107 grams per mole, or AMU. That's the weighted average of the carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. And we could determine this by taking the mass of the carbon-12 times its fractional abundance, the amount that, the proportion of the total, it's 98.93%, plus the mass of carbon-13 times its abundance, plus the mass of carbon-14 times its abundance. And since there's essentially no carbon-14 naturally occurring, the abundance is essentially zero. Now, it, knowing what an average, um, a weighted average is can be a little bit tricky. So let me give you a more concrete example. Let's say that you have a room, and in this room you have boys and girls. The boys, there are 10 of them, and they are all age 12. And there are four girls that are all age 15. If I were to say, what's the average age in the room? It would be somewhere in between these two numbers. And hopefully you should be able to tell that it would be more heavily weighted towards the boys because there are more boys than there are girls. To find the actual average, what we do is we take the age of the boys, so 10 years, times the number of boys, or the, the, the fractional amount, so the percentage. There are 10 out of 14 of the people are boys. plus the age of the girls, which is 15 each, times its fractional abundance, which is 4 out of 14. When you add those together, you get that the weighted average is 12.9 years old, which matches what we predicted, that it should be closer to the, av to the average age of the boys themselves, because there are more boys than girls. Okay, now let's look at a chemical example. If you have vanadium, it has two naturally occurring isotopes, and we want to know what are the relative abundances. So there's a couple things here you need to keep in mind. We have essentially two pieces of information, although they're not necessarily obvious. One, what we just said, is that the average atomic weight, which comes from the periodic table, is the weighted average of those isotopes. But if we, don't, if we don't know the abundance of one, how can we know the abundance of the other? Well, 
that's where we have a very important relationship. And that is, we know that there are only two isotopes. We know we have vanadium-50 and vanadium-51. And that the sum of the abundances must add up to be all, the whole thing, or in other words, one. So if we say this, let's let the relative abundance of this be x, let's let this be y, then we know that x plus y is equal to one, or if we look at it in percentages, x plus y is equal to 100%. Now that we know that, we can find the actual abundances because we can combine that with uh, the atomic weight relationship where the, the average atomic weight is the isotope abundance times its fractional abundance plus the isotopic abundance of vanadium-51. So by combining these two relationships, we can solve. This is just restating the equation that we saw earlier. Now we can substitute in. We saw that x plus y is equal to 1. So rearranging that, we get 1 minus the abundance for vanadium-51, which we're going to call y is equal to x. And let me change those here. We can then substitute those in, and we get 1 minus, oh, excuse me, I have made an error here. Um, oh, this is correct. 1 minus y times its relative, or its, its uh, isotopic mass, plus the isotopic mass of vanadium-51 we now have one equation, one set of unknowns, because we've done the substitution. You can then plug in the values and solve. Now, if you're not sure how to do that algebra, that's when you should definitely come and get some help in the help session or office hours. That gets us then a fractional abundance for vanadium-51 of 99.5. Plugging that back into the original equation, we can see that the fractional abundance of vanadium-50 is 0 0.0025. Now, does this make sense? Well, take a look. The average mass is really close to vanadium-51. And so we would expect that it would take up the vast majority of the isotopic uh, abundance. Here's a comprehension check for you. Pause the video and try this one on your own to see if you can do it, and then come back. Welcome back. Here's the solution to this one. So we want to know which one's most abundant. Looking on the periodic table, you can see that the atomic weight of silicon is 28.086 AMU. That is somewhere in between 27 or the silicon 28 and silicon 29. Um, and it's a lot closer to silicon 28 than it is to any of the others. Because it's really close to the mass of silicon 28, silicon must be mostly silicon 28. And if you were to look at the values, you would see that it is 92% of silicon 28, 4.7% silicon 29, and 3.1% of silicon 30. Now, where do these all come from? We can do mass spectrometry to determine the percent abundances. Uh, essentially what happens is you take your sample and, you, and it shoots through uh, the mass spectrometer and it gets um, ionized and then those ions get deflected based upon their mass, based upon their charge, and then it hits a detector. What we see in the detector, what comes out, is we see these peaks and the area under the peaks represents the percent abundance 
of the different isotopes. So we can use those data to tell us about uh, the average atomic mass. So here is another sample problem, one that I want you to try and work through uh, using the, the three-step what is given, what do I want to know, what do I need to know model as you were introduced in recitation. So the first question, what information is given? Well, we have two isotopes and that we're using the mass spectrum. Uh, we're given the isotope mass and the percent abundances as given from the data. So we have 37.3%, the mass of 191, and a mass of 193 for 62.7%. What do we want to know? We want to know the average atomic mass of the atom. So what do we need to solve this? This is where we're going to need the relationship between the average atomic weight and the isotopic masses and the fractional abundances. We can then plug in those values, make sure that you're converting from percentage to a fractional value, and then solve. And we would get for that uh, equal to 192.25 AMU. At that point, what you could do is you could look at the periodic table and see which element this most likely corresponds to. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, you can ask on Piazza and office hours, recitation, or during the help sessions. Have a good day.